And I say, bless me. And all is the Father, we just bless your name. Be unto the To receive glory and power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the heavens and every creature on the earth and underneath the sea, and such as already received, come out saying, Hallelujah. 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 Strength and dominion. Hallelujah. And power. Be unto the Lamb that sits upon the throne forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Blessings and honor, glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, my God. Forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessings. Hallelujah. Blessings and honor, dominion and power. Hallelujah. More than ever. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. I want to start off this evening, yes, of course, by welcoming you and appreciating uh, each and every one. But I want to start off with how the chapter ends. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb, be glory and honor and power according to the word forever and ever. Amen.
We want to glorify the risen Lord. We want to glorify the Lamb of God that was slain for the before the foundation of the world. We want to glorify the one that used his blood, that made a sacrifice and bought back our salvation, that brought us back into alignment with God. The Bible says that he purchased for God a kingdom of kings and priests. Hallelujah. We want to exalt the one who is worthy. There is only one that is worthy according to scripture that is seated in that position right now and his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the Bible says he is worthy forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. We glorify the worthy one. We glorify the risen lamb. We join with the heavenly chorus and we sing his praise. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to his mighty precious name. We bless your name, Lord. We just bless you, Lord. And we thank you for everything that you're about to do. Even now, my God, hallelujah. And over the course of the next couple of days, hallelujah. Again, I want to thank you for joining us. Um, we are day seven of the 21 days. We have quite a way left to go, but by the strength of the Lord, we will finish the task and finish the assignment. We are going to be looking on chapter five today and i'm not going to keep you very long i'm just going to be pulling out <clears throat> just some main areas from the text so as usual i'm going to start by reading the text and i know it might be a little bit boring for some but i must do this the word has to go out the bible says when we read it aloud there is a blessing in it and not only for that reason but the word needs to be spread over as many uh, mediums as possible. The word has to be heard in somebody's life, in somebody's heart tonight, praise God. In somebody's home, hallelujah. I'm reading from chapter 5. <clears throat> and I'm reading the NIV version. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne... A scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. Glory be to God. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scrolls? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I, John, this is John, I wept and I wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or to look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seal. Praise God. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Here we're seeing a little um, addition to what was happening in the previous chapter. Now Jesus is in the center along with God. Praise God. He went out and he took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Hallelujah. Each one had a heart. And they were holding golden boughs of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe, language and people and nation. 
You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousands times ten thousands. They encircled the throne, <clears throat> the living creatures and the elders. <clears throat> In a loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Hallelujah. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on the earth and underneath the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever and ever. I'm adding that extra ever inside there. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders, glory be to God, fell down and worshipped him. Hallelujah. So in this chapter, what we're seeing is that we saw in the previous chapter that God is seated on the throne. And we saw how his position is in the center. And we saw the four living creatures around him. We saw the spirit of God in front of him. We saw the 24 elders on the 24 thrones around him. Now we, we're seeing another dimension. The Bible tells us that John now sees God with the scroll in his hand. And the matter at hand was who could, who was worthy enough to take the scroll from the hand of the one that is seated on the throne and not only to take the scroll, but to open the seven seals, praise God. And we're not going to talk a lot about um, the scroll today. We're going to be, I'm going to be very brief. I'm going to briefly discuss the scroll. And I want to discuss the matter of the lion and the lamb and the golden bowl of incense praise god so a scroll in those days we know it was like a form of letter or decrees right it's how people wrote stuff and they rolled it and what what was the custom of those days was to stamp it or to to um put sort of a stamp with a signet ring on it as evidence that indeed that document is coming from whomever it is said to be coming from. So it's more or less like a signature. And here we see that this particular scroll had seven seals. We're coming back to the number seven again, which speaks about completion. But what was unique about this scroll was that most times or oftentimes the words were written inside the scroll, but not on the outside of the scroll, which signifies, sig it tells us that a lot is written in this scroll. Glory be to God. And what is it that is in the scroll? Based on what will be revealed, we don't know the entire contents, but it would appear as if the redemptive plan of God, the plan to save his people and to judge the wicked and to establish his kingdom here on earth is written in the scroll, praise God. Hallelujah. And the only one that could have taken that scroll and open it, we see, is Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. But I want to bring it to a concept that is very common in the book of Revelation. I think I mentioned it before. John will hear something and then when he turns around, he sees another thing. And this is exactly what happened. So the elder said to him when he was weeping, do not weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. And he is able to open the scroll. But when John sees, chapter um, verse 6 says, he saw 
a lamb looking as if it was slain and that lamb was standing at the center of the throne praise god so i want to bring to us the point that the lion is the lamb the lamb that was slain is the lion of the tribe of judah praise god we know uh in jamaica we have this this saying we know of jesus as gentle jesus meek and mild but there is also an aspect of Jesus where he is Lord and King and he rules with an iron scepter and those that are of the nation, meaning those that refuse to submit themselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, they will be according to the word. God will dash them to pieces. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're looking at two different aspects of Jesus the servant who is the lamb and the king who is the lion of the tribe of judah and just follow me a bit as we go through just a few scriptures that allude to the kingship of jesus christ so from in the book of genesis we see uh where it is prophesied that the heel of the woman will crush the head of the ser of the serpent. Praise God. Then we see that uh, in later in Genesis, when uh, Israel is about to die and he is pronouncing the blessings upon each and every one of his sons, he mentions that Judah is the house that the Messianic messianic king would come from and that the scepter meaning that um rulership would not depart from judah when we look over into the prophetic books and we look into the book of isaiah we see that isaiah in uh isaiah 7 prophesies that god will give judah a sign of the messiah or Emmanuel and that sign will be that the virgin a virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son couple chapters later in chapter 9 we see Isaiah saying for unto us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father the prince of peace and of his greatness and his government the bible says and his peace there shall be no end and he will rule on david's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore glory be to god we see further in the book of of isaiah chapter 11 and we see the concept of <clears throat> the shoot of david being brought about when he says that up out of so a shoot will come out of the house of david and that that shoot which is basically when you cut down a tree and you leave the stub in the ground what happens is that the root is still there god had promised david that David will always have somebody from his lineage that would sit on that throne. Praise God. So the shoot is an offspring or a growth from something that was cut down. Praise God. And that, that shoot that came from the household of David would be filled of the spirit. We see in Isaiah 11, the different, the seven components of the spirit and that that shoot, which is Jesus Christ will judge in righteousness. Praise God. We also see in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah echoes the same thing. The, 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 the Messianic King would be a great political leader he would save the people and he would rule with righteousness he would not and he would also rule uh, wisely praise god but somehow i think we forgot or many um i believe believers sometimes forget that in this said book of isaiah god himself mentions the fact that the messiah will come as a servant if you read 
Isaiah 42. Uh, the text says, uh, this is my servant whom I uphold. And it goes on to say that he will not come as a king, but he will come as a bruised reed. And he will come as a smoldering wick. That means that there is nothing when the scripture tells us that is, uh, there's another scripture, uh, three of them in all, that tells us that there was nothing to look upon. When you look upon Jesus Christ, he did not resemble the Messiah. And that's why he was first rejected because they expected him to come in the form of a king. Praise God. But yet still it says, even though he would come in this form, in this form, he would be able to establish justice on the earth through the blood of Jesus, through his blood. And then now, if we read on, we realize that when he comes back, he has already made an establishment. He is going to be coming to bring the kingdom into realization as the lion, praise God. Hallelujah. So when John looks around, he doesn't see this military symbol of a lion. He doesn't see the strength of a lion. What he sees are the rulership uh, signal of a lion. But what, what he sees is a lamb. The lamb looks as if it was slain. I want to let us understand that we cannot understand the lion without understanding the lamb the lamb and the lion is one one in 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 one person in um let me say that say that again it's two aspects of one person you can't understand the lion without understanding the lamb and you can't understand the lamb without understanding the lion jesus is the passover lamb and in the same way, the Bible tells us that he laid down his life. No man took it from him. He had authority to lay it down and he laid it down in accordance with the will of God. The Bible tells us that when we look at the symbol of the lamb, lion and the lamb, it reveals that his conquest, his victory was not found in his kingship but it was found in his sacrifice, in his death. And that's why the book of Philippians said that even though he was God, he did not consider e equity with God something to be reckoned with, but he derobed himself of every uh, kingly, uh, what I would say, garment, and he became man, and he suffered, and he died on a cross, praise God, a most gruesome death, and the Bible says that is why he was exalted and given a name which is above every other name, that at the sound of the name Jesus, everything on earth and in heaven must bow to that name glory be to god hallelujah and so we see the bible also tells us that there was no one to god's own arm worked salvation there was no one to sin jesus himself came and he paid that price so here is uh what i would call one of the paradox of christianity if it is that you are to be found worthy, if it is that you are to conquer, there must be a laying down of your life, praise God. The Bible says, Jesus says, I will, if any man wishes to follow me, that man has to deny himself and take up your cross and follow me, glory be to God, hallelujah. Have we ever sat and thought about this scripture? Why is it that the believer needs to take up the cross? It is the same part that Jesus went, went through in order to receive or to be found now worthy. And we are Christians, we're following the part of the Savior. My God and my King, in our lives we are experiencing cross situations day in and day out. And some Christians are, they are tired, they are stressed, they have put on the cross and all manner of things. 
but I am saying to you right now, wherever you drop that cross, you need to go and pick it up back and finish that journey. Because if you intend to be found worthy, you cannot, my God, reach glory without the cross. There's a way to glory, and it is not by the laying on of hands by any man. No man can lay glory unto you. The glory that will be received in you or seen in you has to come from your cross experience. Something in you has to die, praise God. You have to walk the road to Golgotha in order to be enthroned and be seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the major theme in the book that is coming through is that in order, Jesus did not get to the position of being worthy except through the cross, praise God. Hallelujah. And the second point I want to bring out, right? The second point I want to bring out if you notice, we're jumping down to verses 8. Each one had a harp, and these are the four living creatures and the 24 elders, had a harp, and they were holding golden boughs of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. So I want to pick up on that point about incense and the prayers of God's people. So in the Old Testament, we see that there was an altar of incense that stood in the front of, of the, uh, the most holy place. So it was just on the outside. And the priest offered incense to God daily. And what he would do is to take some coal from the altar and put it in a along with a handful of, of what is called um, incense or fragrance, and that the combination of those two would burn, I am told, in the most holy of holies. One, it would create a sweet aroma, and the Bible tells us that that aroma goes up to God, as well as the fact that if there was any sin, the blood would be placed on the four horns of the altar. The glory be to God. The smoke from the incense served two purposes. One, it would prevent the priest from seeing the glory of God and thus save his life. But essentially, the, 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 um, the priest was conducting or he was acting in a capacity of, of bringing the prayers of the saints to God. So in those days, it was only the priests that could offer up um, incense. They served, as I said, as a mediator between the people and God, bringing their prayers into the, into the presence of God. And if we look at uh, Psalms 141 verse 2, David prays, let my prayer be set before you as incense. So this tells me that our prayers before God can be twofold, or meaning it can be either an incense to God, meaning it, it smells good, or it can uh, smell or reek in the nostril of God. Praise God. We're not going to go to that section, but we ought to understand that our prayers carry a scent. Praise God. It carries a scent that acts ascends to the heavenlies. And that's why when you have made up your mind to pray, you will find sometimes that there are interferences in the atmosphere or uh you will hear some people say that the atmosphere it is almost as if there is a, a ceiling of glass because 
because the devil doesn't want your prayer to ascend to the heavens because he knows what this center means to God. Number one, it's a scent of obedience. And when we are obedient before our God, that means that God is pleased with us. Number two, oftentimes when the prayer was offered like this, it was a man saying to God, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And as much as he's a just God, he's always a merciful God. The Bible tells us that we have a father, our father, that if we call on him, he hears and he answers. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we know that the out of incest was connected with sacrifice. And we spoke about that already. So the mere fact that we have the lamb in this uh, text, we have the lamb of God, we have Jesus looking as the lamb slain, we have the bowl of incense, which is a prior of God's people, it tells me that there is about to be a transaction in this heavenly scene, uh, though it's not mentioned, but it appears as if God is, uh, it appears as if Jesus is going to perform the, the duty of the high priest in the form of the lamb, and he is going to bring the prayers of God's people to the mercy seat, uh, sprinkled with his own blood. The Bible in Hebrews tells us that we have not come to a mountain blade in what fire her but we have come to our Zion which is this is the, the place where Jesus is our high priest this is the place where the blood is sprinkled the covenant is enforced with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and this is a place where there is a company of innumerable angels praise God hallelujah so that scripture is tying in nicely with this so it appears that Jesus I don't know which at which point is about to do the transaction that the book of Hebrews speaks about sprinkling or a are offering his blood in the heavenly tabernacle for the sins of the people of God praise God Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We have a high priest. The Bible tells us we no longer need a physical priest. We can now go boldly to the throne of grace because of our high priest, Jesus Christ. He's not merely our advocate, but he's also the atoning sacrifice. Praise God. So uh, basically, Jesus is the one that is offering a sacrifice in the heavenly places, thereby he's cleansing his people, praise God. So we ought not to take the work of uh, Jesus' intercessory work lightly because it is true that work. It is true that blood that we are able to come without fear. Hallelujah. It's because of that work why we're able to come without the canopy of incense. It's because of that work why we're able to come without uh, a priest having to go before us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So the Bible tells us that our prayers are in the heavenly place. So I want to encourage somebody tonight. You have been praying about a matter. Years have passed. Months have passed. Weeks have passed. It has been a long time. And you are wondering, will God ever answer? Will this prayer, has God even heard this prayer? I want to let you know, as long as this prayer is in the, God has heard the prayer number one. As long as the prayer is in the will of God, while it tarry, I'm asking you to wait. 
I hear one man said that if you have been praying for something uh, over a length of time and it has not yet manifest, he said, don't necessarily look on the negative point. Probably it is that God is building up a witness in you. People will look and come to say that it could only be God. I know what she has been going through and for years she has waited, she has labored in the place of prior. But look now that thing has come true. When you make your testimony, no man can say this isn't the hand of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So the, the chapter basically exalts Jesus and presents him and enthroned him as king. Hallelujah. I also want to touch on the fact that number one, God, verse 10, we were made a kingdom and priests. So we already know what a kingdom is. But as priests, even though it is that, yes, the old system of priesthood as we knew it in that day doesn't exist today. There is still a role for the priesthood. God still needs priests in his kingdom. God still needs somebody who uh, will go and intercede for someone who is unable to do it for themselves. God still needs somebody to be advocating on behalf of someone who has not yet found their way to the throne of grace. God still needs somebody to join their faith with someone in the place of prior glory be to God. So the role of the priesthood is still very much active and alive. And if we reach out in the book of Revelation and look in other prophetic texts, we'll see that in some way, shape or form, the role of the priest is going to be coming back. Praise God. So this is the paradox of the Christian faith. We overcome through suffering. Praise God. I want to etch that in your mind. We overcome through suffering. Never forget that. Second, our prayers are a pleasing aroma to God. And number three, there is a connection between worship on the earth and worship in heaven. Uh, this Bible, this text tells us that the, the worship scene, it started in heaven with the, the, the four living creatures and the elders. And then we see that it, it trans, how can I say, it, it grew to uh, the innumerable company of angels joining in with the praise. And then the Bible says that every creature on the earth, beneath the earth, and underneath the earth also began to join in with praise. I want to tell somebody that some there is a, a frequency of praise that we can tap into, that is coming directly from the heavens. And when we align ourselves with that praise, we'll be saying exactly what heaven is saying, and God will be glorified. Jesus Jesus will be magnified and the spirit will be honored. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So hearing is another um, nugget in worship. Tapping to the frequency in the heavens to get the worship frequency here on earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to be rounding up tonight. I said we weren't going to stay too long tonight. We're going to be raising up some prayers to God. I have two prayer points here that I really want us to pray from the depths of our heart. Because 
I am very much convinced that the time to make it right is now. Some of the things that we have been chasing down in life, they look good. It is good to have them, but of what? of what value will they be on that day called day praise god we need to get ourselves in alignment we have not been so passionate about the things of god as the things of the world we just go along with anything and anywhere and we're not putting a structure in this thing called christendom as in your personal life Yes, there is some structure in the church, but when you leave the church, what is happening behind the scenes, praise God. And so, and also I want to bring up these prayer points because Christians, and I can speak for myself, we are under the, 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 the attack of the enemy. And if we look at things, we will drop what God has given us we will lose faith the bible says when the son of man come will he find such faithfulness we need to be um building up our faith we build it up through prayer we cannot allow the enemy to take our faith based on what's happening in our lives or what we see happening around us remember this the theme of the passage god is sovereign he is large and in charge in spite of and despite of glory be to god and so i want you to pray these prayers from the depth of your heart if you don't mean them don't pray them but if you really want to reach that place of glory understand there is a process and that is a problem today that is a problem we live in a micro world, microwave world, and everything needs to be done in two minutes. I see that person, and that person is so powerful in God. Uh, if I get a formula, I can know it takes time. It takes sacrifice. It takes you carrying the cross. Praise God. Hallelujah. It takes some whipping, it takes some shame, it takes some loss. But at the end, when you have come to the place where you can say that the agenda or the task or the mandate is finished and you can go and see your father, you will know with a certainty that he will open his arm to you because you have been obedient, you have persevered, praise God. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray, my God and my King, my God and my King. Father, we come to you one more night. We bow our faces before you one more time, God. God, your word says this is the confidence we have that when we come in prayer, God, you hear. You hear, God. So we come tonight, God, and we say, my God, that as many who has decided to follow you. Strengthen them to carry their cross, my God. Strengthen them with strength in their inner mind, my God. Strengthen them with strength in their mind, God. Strengthen their mind, God, to bear the weight of the cross, my God. Strengthen their feet, God, to bear the weight of the cross. Yes, God, you say your yoke is easy and your burden is light but God as we travel through this world we realize by God that the cross bearing experience takes a toll on our humanity but God we pray Lord give us the resolve to walk the way to Golgotha and not put down the cross my God let us not be like those that shave off a piece and shave off a piece to make it easy and when we reach the point to cross over the cross cannot assist because we have we have changed the shape my god give us the uh, strength god to continue the journey and be counted as men worthy in the name of jesus christ of nazareth my god and my king i pray lord that you will send men with the spirit of 
of Simon of Cyrene, oh God, to assist us where we stumble, God, where we fall, God. Lord God, send that man that you have assigned, God, to lift us up, uh, to lift up, help us to lift that cross uh, and carry, oh my God, as far as you will permit him, uh, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My Father and my King, I pray that our prayers, God, will rise before you daily as sweet incense, my God. My God, let our prayers rise before you, God, not with a foul smell and a foul odor. Oh God, may our prayers be aligned with your will. May our prayers be aligned, oh God, with the humility, my God, of repentance. In the name of Jesus, God, bring us back, my God, bring us back, bring us back, call us back into that place of prayer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth my God and my King help us never to forget that we have indeed an advocate in Jesus Christ Lord God Almighty let us appeal to the sprinkled blood my God in the place of prayer and the fire of the Holy Spirit to bring oh my God that aroma that is pleasing to you in the name name of Jesus my God and my King father we just say thank you Lord we just say thank you God we just say thank you Heavenly Father we say thank you Lord God what else can we say but thank you God Thank you for your grace, God. Thank you for your mercy, God. We could have been consumed had it not been by your, for your grace and your mercies that are new every single morning. My God and my King, I lift up before you, God, the country of Haiti, God, people, Lord God, who are in suffering right now because of the earthquake, Lord God. We pray, mighty Father God, that help will come for as many that are in need in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God, I pray that your will be done for that country. I pray your will be done in the Caribbean. I pray your will be done in Jamaica. I pray, God, we will look, oh my God, on the signs and the times and we'll come to you in repentance in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, I pray your will will be done in this Canada here in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. I pray pray your will will be done in our lives. I pray the establishment of your kingdom in the lives of your people, even now in the name of Jesus. My God and my King. Everything, my God, everything, my God, that has encamped around us God that is not of you my God you said that when the Assyrian armies came up my God against Israel that you sent your angels into the camp of the Assyrians and the angels cut down 185,000 of those that opposed Israel my God I pray Lord that there are some things God that in our humanity we cannot do but send divine assistance God though the enemy encamp it round about us cut down their strength and power God by divine uh, my God assistance in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth my God and my King everything that stands to oppose your people Lord God I pray that the God God that fought wars with David will go before us in this battle in the name of Jesus. Lord God, you sent to David.
David, when you hear the sound in the poplar trees, you will know that I have gone over my God. Even the very trees, God, go over before us in that medium, God. And I pray that we'll have ears, God, to hear the sound in the poplar trees, which would tell us that we need to advance in this warfare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth my God and my King we stand God my God you say we're too are gathered God you're in the midst of them touching anything my God I touch and I join my faith God with everyone on this program Lord God that has a need today whatever the need is whatever the prayer is whatever God they are beckoning you for my God as much as it is in your will I pray God that you will grant it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth God I pray my God that even my God over the next uh, remaining days uh, that you visit your people with dreams my God uh, and visions Lord uh, and reveal my God the secret behind the matters and the situation uh, in their lives even now in the name of Jesus uh, my God expose it uh, expose it God uh, once the enemy is exposed uh, then a matter of defeat uh, is is of no uh, great consequence but Lord expose the secret of the matter in the name of Jesus my God and my King we have to give up on the shadow box saying God we can't shadow box shadow box in prayer anymore but let us come to prayer oh god with sound knowledge and understanding that only the spirit can give father again we thank you and i thank you for the lives of each and every one and i just bless your mighty name in jesus name we pray i am gonna ask everyone again as far as possible please like and share hallelujah and as far as possible please continue to pray for the program and i will see you again tomorrow god's willing hallelujah remember be faithful remember if you hear the word of the lord or his voice today don't be hard-hearted ah uh, if you would only let Jesus in, he wants to give you time of refreshing. So I pray that you'll submit yourself to him tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.